right on time. I was waiting for you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, December 19th. What we do on this show is we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. These are stocks that are under five bucks, and you can find them on any market, the OTC and the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. And we are particularly focusing in on those that have the potential to make us money. Now, when I'm looking for hot penny stocks, I'm normally doing it here at Thinkorswim, going through my scans, looking at charts. You can see heat in a chart very quickly. You can see if volume is coming in with that big blue tsunami. You can see if the price is turning up and about ready to cut through the 200. You can see a long run. Any of those constitute heat. Well, when you find a chart that has heat, then take the time to go rummaging around through all those press releases and filings looking for a catalyst. When you find a catalyst to match your hot chart, now you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got three for you today. But before we jump into that, I've got some extras. I want to share some hot charts with you. I see a lot of hot charts through the day, and I only pick three to talk about. But there's a lot of charts that I could show you. Now, I'm not going to show you many, but I got a couple I want to share with you right now. And then I want to take a look at the charts for some of the stocks that we've been watching together here for the last couple of weeks. I know a lot of investors are monitoring them, so we might as well look at them together. So the first stock we're going to take a look at here, keeping in mind that I haven't done any due diligence on these folks. I just found hot charts on the four hour chart. That's where I look for my heat. Initially, I just look for breakout setups on the four hour. So we're looking at SBNY Signature Bank. She went up 54% today. She's currently at 27 cents. Now you can't see anything like that, can you? So I did have to zoom in on it. And it's apparent what's going on. She was way down here at 001 and she is now at 24 cents. Folks, that is 24,000 percent gains. A hundred dollar bill down here would have made you $24,000 up there. And as you can see, it's a strong run right now. Doesn't look like she's pulling back. Lots of volume coming in. All of our oscillators are going to the moon. SBNY looks hot. Taking a look at PPCB. She went up 47%. This is Propanic Biopharma. Now again, you can't see a whole lot this distance away, so we zoom in on it. What we've got is an atypical breakout chart. Now, it doesn't look like she's really trying to break out, does it? No, we're catching this early. What I see here is that all the SMAs, the 50-day, the 20-day, the 200 haul, were all falling very gently, but they were falling right now. Here at this point, they have all turned up. Every single one of them has changed trend. So I expect this to create a current and pull the price on up with it. And looking down at our oscillators, you can see they are just now all starting to push up. Last hot chart is TTOO. This is T2 Biosystems. Now you can see she is at the 200 right now. This is an atypical breakout chart. <laughs> Not a lot going on. She's been flat dribbling on down, got close to our 200 haul here, and just here in the last 24 hours, she's made a move. The volume got very strong. The price jumped up, crushed that 200, came down. Where are we at right now? We're above the 200, way up there. And our oscillators are all going to the moon right now. Something's going on. I don't have a clue about these three charts, folks. You're going to have to do your own due diligence. Now let's take a look at four stocks that a lot of people are considering. I have covered all of these stocks. First one is Liquor House, ticker LQR. They just had news come out. <laughs> Their target price has been lifted from $5.01 to $303. No, I'm not kidding you. That is not, it's just not one analyst. There were many analysts that brought in price targets between $303 and $315 over the next year. So this is her four-hour chart. As you can see, the volume has been growing. You can't see much else besides that. And she is breaking out right now. We looked at this yesterday. She was right up underneath the 200. And right now she is breaking out, hanging into this channel. Everything looks still positive for this stock. This is INPX in Pixian. She finished the day here at, uh, what did we get? Uh, minus 3%. Liquor was down 1.7. 
Inpixian is down 3.4%. Inpixian is having a spin out here in the next couple of weeks. They are spinning off graffiti to the NASDAQ. Right behind the spin out, they are doing a merger. So we're going to get dividends in that spin out. Then the merger is going to happen with Damon, which is an electric motorcycle company that already has $85 million worth of orders on the books. That is probably going to start to run. In the meantime, in Pixian themselves, have a merger going on with XTI, this vertical aerolift airplane company. That's going to be running. The stock fell today. As you can see, she's been on a downtrend for quite a while. Ooh, these last two days, she has taken a hard fall, falling onto this strong support right here and sitting on it. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. All right, this is actually good setup, folks. She fell down to this low bubble and she is just going sideways right now, which we like to call accumulation or consolidation. There's a lot of activity going on here. People are acquiring shares. It's an attractive price and she is she is starting to break out right now. We have been watching this for a breakout. This is a good buy zone. She's gotten through her 200, bounced off it, and looks like she's taken off after market hours. Another hot stock we're looking at is IFIS, the green cattle feed that helps the ozone, helps the cows. It just helps everybody. Gets rid of the flies, the smell. It is a real good product. Take a look at our four hour chart. Well, she's been running. She did have a bad day today. She dropped 16%. As you can see, we looked at it here on the 8th of December. She was down there at roughly six and a half cents. She got up here to 16 cents. That's like 250% run. She's come back down hard, all the way down to seven cents, bounced back up, and right now we're at about 10, 11 cents. Things look good. I think profit takers took their money and she's come back down to the 20 and she's going to resettle and start to take off again. Our oscillators look a little bit weak on the four hour chart. What's that five minute chart look like? Yeah, she took a big drop today. Rumor has it there was a lot of shorting going on this morning. I wasn't following it, but I'll take their word for it because that's what it looks like. She had a big drop here from 13 cents down to almost 6 cents, and now she's worked herself back up over those strong SMAs, bouncing off of the 20, heading towards the 200. Oscillators are a bit weak on it. And the last hot stock, CEOS, Vetcom. This is the company that is helping vets to get the right amount of benefits from the government. Most of them are being cheated and not getting what they deserve. So the company has been catching some attention here recently, looking at a four hour chart. So she had a big drop here. She has curved around, had a nice breakout. Today she fell after that breakout and she is right on top of her 200. Our price currently is 2.1. Oh, we're above it. Yeah, we're way up here. So we're way above the 200, way above the nine day SMA. Volume is still strong. SMAs are going the right direction. Oscillators are growing too. Looking at our five day, five minute. Nice run up, came down, looked like the 50 was going to hold it. She lost hold of that. Ah, look what we got here. Brand new SMA coming onto the board, a 200. And if you watch my shows regularly, you hear me tell you that in many cases, when a new SMA comes on the board, and it doesn't matter if it's above the price or below the price, the price normally gravitates to it. May not touch it, but it definitely gravitated towards it here. Got real close. She's bouncing away from it. She's gotten on top of her 20. And I'm going to presume, by looking at this chart, you can see she really respects the 50. When she fell, it was the 50. So I think she's going to get back up on this 50, and we're going to need to watch that 50 come back around, and then she'll start to climb. So there's a little tidbits on some hot charts and stocks we've been watching. Now let's go take a look at the hot stocks I found to tell you about. Whoa, that's a bit extreme. First stock we're taking a look at is Rio 2 Limited, ticker R-I-O-F-F. -F. Now we're late to the party if we're looking for a breakout. She's already done that. Back at the end of November, she was well under the 200 at 11 cents. Broke out over the 200, hitting a high of 29 cents, well over 250% gains, and then fell back to the current 22.5 cents. But to be completely honest, it isn't about the chart. It is about the news, the catalyst. 
This is a gold mining company working in Chile, and they've been setting up this mine for a few years, and they are ready to go right now. And tomorrow, December 20th, they get a final decision from the Chilean government if they can proceed. So Rio finished today at 22.5 cents. She was up about 12.5% gains today. She is on the best tier of the OTC, the OTC QX. The QX is the top tier because not only do you have to audit your financials, you got to give us as much information as you would as if you were on the major exchange. So this is the most transparent, the most trustworthy tier on the OTC. And they have got every green tick we could hope for over here. Verified profile and transfer agent. That's verified information I tell you to look for with any stock, especially the pinks. They've got independent directors listed here. That means that they have intentions of uplisting. I haven't read that anywhere, but that's the only reason I know of listing them here. And we've got a bonus, a great bonus. They list themselves as penny stock exempt. They had to earn this. What this means is they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars in assets or revenues during that time, and they've kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to everybody they're responsible. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So the company looks really good in that regard. So what is the company about? Well, I do want to focus in on this just before we look at the news. Rio2 is a mining company with a focus on development and mining operations. Rio2 is focused on taking its Phoenix Gold project in Chile to production in the shortest possible time frame based on a staged development strategy. Now, because it is all about this Phoenix Gold Mine, let's get a description of what it's about without any technical jargon. The Phoenix Gold Project is one of the largest undeveloped gold oxide heap leach projects in all of the Americas, having over 5 million ounces of gold. The project is an example of modern gold mining, where a full complement of technical, environmental, and social considerations has been consulted on and designed in from the outset. The project represents a significant investment in the gold mining business in Chile by a junior mining company of approximately $210 million of initial and sustaining capital and will generate employment for at least 1,200 people during the construction phase and 550 people during the 17 years of operations. The mine being contemplated at the project will be a run of mine heap leach operation, which means there will be no crushing there. They will have no tailing storage facilities, thereby minimizing the overall impact and the footprint of the project. So it's a modern mining gold company. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice increase. We went from 51,000 up to 873,000. They're not huge numbers, but that's about a 15-time increase. Share structure for Rio. Outstanding share count. That is about $260 million. Uh, we might be able to count on that float. It's current. I normally don't count on this because it's always outdated. This one is just last month, 227 million shares. Pretty high. Checking out the financials for the company. Well, they are in exploration. They haven't got approval yet. That's what this is all about. They're not making any money yet. But they do have a balance sheet. Looking at the cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, about five and a half million. Total assets all added together is about 110 million. Total liabilities is one third of that, about 34 million, which means we've got positive shareholder equity of 75 million in this company. Disclosures. We don't have anything here since 2018, so let's take a look at the news. And really, there's only two pieces of news that we really need to take a look at. This one here that came out March 9th when all of this started. Actually, it started before this, but this is when the problem began. They tell us here that an updated pre-feasibility study was prepared for Phoenix Gold Project in 2019 and restated in 2021. Since that date and over the course of 2022, the company completed detailed engineering and updated cost estimates for the purpose of financing discussions with lenders for the construction of the project. Discussions came to an immediate halt on July 5th 
when the approval for their project's environmental impact assessment was formally declined by the Chilean government. Despite the suspension of activities pertaining to the construction of the project, Rio 2 is encouraged that their lenders are still showing interest in participating in financing of Phoenix Gold Mine construction. Therefore, on August 31, 2022, Phoenix Gold decided to exercise its right to file an administrative appeal before the ministry's committee. And that decision is happening tomorrow. The company announced that the Chilean authorities have confirmed that the Committee of Ministers will announce their decision on the administrative appeal previously filed by the subsidiary Phoenix Gold for the approval of Phoenix Gold EIA at a committee meeting scheduled for December 20th, tomorrow. We don't know what time it's going to be. We don't know if they're going to even release the decision tomorrow. But I am sure as soon as the company knows, we're going to know. And if this comes up, thumbs up, folks, I get the feeling this stock is going to run. Naturally, if it comes back the other way, I think the stock is going to fall. So it is a bit of a wild card, isn't it? Let's go take a look at the chart. Back to think or swim. We are looking at Rio 2 Limited, ticker R-I-O-F-F. -F. That is a six-month, four-hour chart, and it's a little bit backwards. We normally have our high bubble six months back, but here we got our low bubble at just over 10 cents, and we hit our high today of 24 cents. Now, she's had a lot of volatility over these last six months, climbed way above her 200, got way below the 200, and then here at the end of November when she was at 11 cents, she took off, crossed that 200, and kept on pushing, hitting that high today. All of our SMAs are looking brilliant right now. Our 20 day is about ready to cross the 200. Here comes our 50 and our 200 haul. Going to do the same thing. Each one of these will be a golden cross when they cross that 200. A golden cross is one of the strongest, most powerful technicals on the chart. Our oscillators are strong. PPO is climbing. MACD is climbing. RSI has just come out of the overbought and is at 67 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. We got a low back here of 11 cents. She was underneath everything, walked over that 50, and just kept walking. No real excitement. Crossed to 200, kept going. Finally took a breath here, dropping to the 20, bouncing off of that, and now she's running. Hitting that high and pulling back at the end of the day. Lots of volume today. All of our SMAs are perfect. Our 200 is just now turning up. All of the others have already crossed, are evenly spaced, and are smoothly climbing. All of our osculators are showing a lot of strength right now, but the back part of the day did cool them off just a little bit. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. So when she fell, she fell to 16 cents on the 50-day SMA, which looks to be her primary support. We don't have a 200 here yet. She climbed high hitting up 24 cents, and she's rolling back right now, and I'm going to presume she's going to bounce off of that 50, considering there's no 200 in the picture. Our oscillators are a bit weak right now. All of them are pushing down, probably until she hits this 50 and bounces back. Now, we're not going to have to watch this for very long, are we? We've got our decision tomorrow. I don't know what time it's going to be. I don't even know what time zone Chile is in. You may want to consider that as well. But if they get a positive decision, folks, this thing could rip. Let's take a look at that four-hour chart. Oh, man, we have to go back a year. Let's see if she was ever any higher. No, we're at basically all-time highs here. Let's check out the three-year chart. All right, there we go. So somewhere in the middle of this would be her first uh, real strong resistance, and that is right around this area right there. So at about 27 cents, we're going to hit a resistance, and we got another real strong one up there at 41 cents, and you can see our 200 on our three-year chart is up there. So I do like this one just because we don't have to watch it very long, and it is a hot decision with a gold mine that has a lot of gold. R-I-O-F-F. -F. Come on, put it on your watch list and keep your eye on it for tomorrow. Now, this is very interesting. I've been doing videos for two years, and of all the videos I've done, I don't remember ever, not once, covering a bank. Well, today we looked at a hot chart. It was a bank, SBNY. That was Signature Bank, the one that's been having all the problems this year. And now we're looking at another bank. 
This is Carver Bancorp, ticker C-A-R-V. Now, what drew me to her was the chart. It is an atypical breakout chart. She had a breakout over the 200, but it was still a little steep. She came back down under the 200. It is now starting to level off, and it looks like she's ready to break out. Back in November, she had a big, hot piece of news come out, but there hasn't been anything else since. And in this news press was a lot of information, and they tell us that a big decision is waiting to be made here. And this is what we're looking for, this big decision. So Carve finished today at $1.72 with almost 3% gains. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. This comes with benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks, even if they are penny stocks. On the OTC, you got to pay to get in, you got to pay to get out. On the major exchange, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You cannot do that with OTC ever. So what kind of bank is Carver? Yeah, there's different kinds of banks. Carver was founded by a consortium of faith and business leaders in Harlem in 1948 to address the banking needs of the predominantly African-American and Caribbean communities whose residents, businesses, and institutions had limited access to mainstream financial services and business capital. Carver remains headquartered in Harlem today with a branch and 24-7 ATM network that serves the traditionally low to moderate income neighborhoods of the five boroughs of New York City and the surrounding areas. As the neighborhoods that we serve have evolved, so has Carver, which today proudly serves as a vehicle of wealth accumulation, finance, and commerce for communities with increasing diverse income, authenticity, and social economic profiles. So what was the company's relative volume today? Ouch. <laughs> That's like a 60% drop going from 61,000 down to 27,000. Share structure. Well, how about that? We've got ourselves a low float. I don't know what it is, but it's not going to be any more than the outstanding share count, which is at 4.8 million. Our market cap right now it is about 8 million. Financials for the company. Well, she's been doing good. She has been increasing her revenues regularly, though she took a little bit of dip here at the end of her fiscal year in March of 2023, jumping from $19.7 million up to $26.2 million. Now, we know these millions because we've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. Looking at the quarterly reports, looks like she's doing about six, six and a half million every quarter steadily. And I noticed they're not paying one cent for revenue. Could that be? And they're not showing any profit here either. Interesting. Checking out the balance sheet for the company. Well, they got lots of money in the bank, about 41 and a half million. Lots of assets, 711 million. Ooh, lots of liabilities too, 669 million. However, we are still in positive stockholder equity zone. We got $42 million in this company. Checking out the disclosures. Now we do have one fresh filing down here, but actually this is all wrapped up in the news and that's the best place to get this information. And there is only one piece of news to consider. This came out November 20th. Dream Chasers raises its offer to $3.25 per share for 35% of the company. Dream Chasers, Carver Bancor's largest minority shareholder, encourages investors to call and email the bank to accept its improved $3.25 per share offer, which is over 100% to the price right now. Carver Bancar, the largest African-American bank in the U.S., has a stock price of $1.47 a share and market capitalization of roughly $8 million now. Over the past few years, under current management, the bank has been losing money, losing deposits, over-concentrated in commercial real estate and has a stock price down over 80% for many shareholders. On October 27th of this year, Dream Chasers sent a follow-up letter to Carver, basically reiterating everything they've been saying before. Originally, they had a share price of $3 they offered. They've kicked it up to $3.25. They reiterated that Dream Chasers and its partners plans to bring to the bank an accomplished world-class team backed by new capital and deposits. Plus, they're going to offer a severance package to the current management and the board to ensure an amicable change of control. 
In response to our October 27th letter, the bank indicated it would discuss our latest offer internally and set up a date and time for a meeting. And that's all there is. We're just left there hanging. Now this was back in November. I don't know how much time they're gonna take. I don't know if they're gonna wait to the end of the year or what. But this is a big difference in price from $3.25 up to, well, now it's $1.72, right? So there is room to grow. If the bank says yes, we could see a big jump in the price. I'm not sure if it'll go right up to $3.25 because they're only buying one third of the company. But there is definitely room for growth here. But again, we don't know when this is going to happen. So we're just going to have to wait and watch the volume and more importantly, monitor the news. Let's go take a look at the chart for the company now. We're now taking a look at Carver Bancor, ticker C-A-R-V. And we're going to be looking at this pretty chart on the six-month, four-hour view to start. Back in April, almost six months ago, we had our high of $5.73 when she was well above the 200. Once she slipped under that 200, she was on a perpetual downhill trend, hitting this low of $1.15 at the end of October. Now off of that low bubble, she's changed her trend. She is not falling anymore. She has come out from underneath all of the SMAs, gotten on top of the 50. Look here, it is totally flat when she made this big jump to the 200 with a directional intentional spike. That's what I like to call these. They are huge bars that jump all the way to the 200 and then shoot this spike through the 200 way above it, then falls back down. And I'm expecting that. I'm looking for it. When it falls back down, I don't want it to come any lower than where it started. If it comes down higher than where it started, I know it is eager to climb. It's looking for an opportunity. So I'm going to watch that stock. Well, as soon as she came down, she took another run at that 200, breaking through it. But it is still too steep for her to stay up there. So she fell back down here through all of the SMAs. And again, she's starting over right here on her nine-day SMA. Our oscillators, they actually show everything is in recovery right now. Every single one of them is just starting to turn up right now. Volume is what we're missing. We need some volume to come into this picture. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a big pop here from about a buck 64 up to 243 before she fell back down. Then she had that big run up to a uh, $2.40. Came down, crashing through the 50, continued falling, crashing through the 200, hitting a low here of $1.61, and right now she is going sideways. She's crossed her 200 haul, crossed the 50, and she's sitting on top of that 50 right now. Our oscillators, let me zoom in on this PPO, our percentage price oscillator, and it is trying to come up right now. Same thing with our MACD. All of them are in recovery and just starting to climb. Looking at our five day, five minute. So our 200 was falling here and today, right now, it is completely flat. Our price, it got on top of the 200 haul, worked away to the 200 SMA, and now she is negotiating with it with a big green bar here at the end of the day. Volume was a little bit stronger today than other days, but it is still very light. Again, all of our oscillators are showing that we are just now starting a climb. But the problem here is, is that this catalyst isn't going to make the stock run tomorrow or next week unless they come out with a piece of news letting us know what happened. And I don't know when that's going to happen. It could be a long time. It could be next year. Maybe never. Maybe the bank just ignores it. I have no idea. But I found it interesting. So I think CARV at least belongs on your watch list. If you see any volume come in, or better yet, you see a news press come out, you'll be prepared knowing exactly what's happening. CARV. Watch it now. Watch it later. Now here's a stock we've looked at before and it's time to look at it again. This is GNS, Genius Group. Now the last time we looked at it, it was back in August. It was roughly 75 cents. Three days later, it was $1.75. That was almost 140% gains. Two weeks later, she was at $2.48. Now we're looking at roughly 300% gains. Now since then, she has fallen back down and she set herself up for another atypical breakout. Now, when it comes to catalysts, take your pick. 
the company's got lots of news. They've been making lots of deals. They've been paying down debt. They've been getting money invested into the company. There's lots of reasons for this to take off. GNS finished the day today at about 79 cents with almost 10% gains. And she too is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, where you get those same benefits trading penny stocks. So what is Genius Group about? Well, they tell us here that Genius Group is a leading entrepreneur, ed tech, and education group with a mission to disrupt the current education model with a student-centered, lifelong learning curriculum that prepares students with the leadership, entrepreneurial, and life skills to succeed. Through its learning platform, Genius U, the Genius Group, has a member base of 5.4 million users in over 200 countries, ranging from early age right on up to 100 years old. Now, to give you a little more information about the company, I've jumped on over here to their website, Genius Group Net. Now, as you've gathered, the company is an online education company, and this is a huge profitable sector. It is already a multi-trillion not billion, trillion dollar sector. And they anticipate by 2030, it is going to be over $10 trillion. Now the company's got a lot of different curriculums, but their primary one is working with entrepreneurs. They don't just hone the skills and educate entrepreneurs. They help them to discover their strengths. One of their uh, subsidiaries that became very popular, I understand why, is Entrepreneur Resorts. This is where entrepreneurs can not only work together, but live together. Doesn't that look adorable? This was so popular and successful that they spun it out, but not onto the stock market, onto upstream. And everybody did get dividends in that. They've also got education for kids, as you would imagine. And they've got different subsidiaries for different countries. They've got one here for New Zealand, one for South Africa, one for the UK. They also work with colleges and campuses. They've got other educations like working with film and things like that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's nice. We've got about an 80% increase in volume, jumping from 1.8 million to 3.2 million today. Share structure. Well, they only tell us the outstanding share count, which is just under 28 million. The float, it's not going to be any higher than that, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company is currently about $19.9 million. Financials for GNS. Well, it looks like they've had some ups and downs, and oh my, look how they ended the year in 2022. Four years ago, they were just under $10 million. At the end of 2022, they were up to just over $18 million, getting to keep $8.6 million for profit. Quarterly reports, ah, that's right, New York Stock Exchange. They don't have quarterly reports, but they do have a balance sheet. Looking at their cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, that's about 16.8 million. Total assets for the company, about 91 million. Total liabilities, less, 84 million. That gives us positive stockholder equity of just over $7 million. Looking at the disclosures, there's a lot of them. There's a bunch of these 6Ks because every time they come out with a news press, they come out with a 6K and it's just easier to read the news as news. Now, I had to come over here to this site to get the news. It just won't come up on the OTC market. So I'm over here at Insider Tracking. This is a Canadian site, but they do show U.S. stocks and U.S. news. And I really do like this site because I have found in many cases, they have more news here than is actually listed on the OTC market. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of news and I'm just going to headline this and I've tried to categorize it because we got news about investments. We got news about deals they've made and it's just easier if you can see it all together. So I've kind of got a cheat sheet over here. So we're going to start off with their deals. September 7th, Genius Group launches Genius Metaversity 2.0 in partnership with Vatom Labs and Genius X. On September 20th, Genius Group enters joint venture with Groove Digital and Groove AI to deliver AI software as a service platform to educators. Then on October 16th, 
Genius Group enters joint venture with Retreat VR to build VR Life Campus with VR A Genie on Metastore and Apple Vision Pro. November 3rd, Genius Group partners with Daily AI to deliver AI powered news via GeniusU.com. November 16th, Genius Group launches Expotential Entrepreneur Awards in partnership with OpenXO. All right, that takes care of all of their deals. Next, we want to talk about that spin out. It was back on September 15th, they spun out ERL that went on to Upstream. At the same time, the company delisted themselves from Upstream, so they're not dual listed anymore. Then they tell us here that with regard to the spinoff shares, the dividends, they say there is a lockup period on those shares. You can't sell them till six months after it got on upstream. So if you're holding shares, that's when you'll be able to sell them. See what else we got here? Um, no more in that category. So let us take a look now at financials. First one we got here comes September 29th. Genius Group announces 120% revenue growth for the first half of 2023. October 12th, the founder and CEO, Roger James Hamilton, provides personal funding of up to $4 million in Genius Group. And from what I understand, this is an interest-free loan. October 25th, insiders join the CEO in providing an additional $2 million funding to Genius Group. December 15th, Genius Group provides updated guidance with profitable 2023 on 43% to 60% revenue growth. Things are growing as we saw. And finally, December 19th, that would be today, Genius Group pays in full $18 million of convertible notes a year in advance. Everything looks good here, folks. They've got lots of deals. They're working with AI, virtual reality. They're doing everything in the education sector. And it is a huge sector, and they're in lots of countries. I think the company's going to do quite well. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're back. <laughs> this is Genius Group, ticker GNS. We're looking at a one-day, one-year chart getting our 52-week highs and lows. Our 52-week low is $0.30. Cents. Our 52-week high, which hit back in uh, February, that is $7.99. Jumping down to our six-month, four-hour view. This is where we looked at it the last time we were here. This is August 9th. It was $0.75 cents when we looked at it. Three days later, she had jumped 140%. She came back down and then ripped to this high on the six-month chart of $2.48, which was about a 300% gain from when we looked at it. She came down to the 200, bounced on that 200 for quite a few days, and then fell under it, and she slipped down to this low of $0.50. Cents. That was in November, and she landed right on this strong support. You can see she rarely ever comes underneath this, and I'm kind of counting on that. Now, from that low bubble... She directly and immediately went to the 200. That shows me a lot of eagerness. Then she fell down to this strong support and again immediately bounced off it and went to the 200 and crossed it. She has now broke out, hitting this strong resistance here from when she tried to break out before. And she is stuck there right now. But all of our SMAs are lining up nicely. She is sitting there firmly on her 9-day. The 20-day just crossed the 200. Here comes our 50 and 200 haul cross in the 200. All of these are going to give oomph to the price rise. Our volume has been strong these last three days compared to all the days before. And our oscillators, they're all climbing right now. PPO's pushing up, MACD's pushing up, and our RSI did fall out of the overbought, but she is strong at 65 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, isn't that interesting? Where she started 20 days ago is where she's at right now. She came down hitting that strong support, crushing this 200-day on the one-hour chart, and she looks like she's paying heed to her 50-day SMA. Everything is climbing right now, including our 200-day SMA. Our oscillators are all strong, still climbing. 
RSI is still planted, sitting there at 61 now. Five day, five minute. So she's going sideways on her 200 here. Took this weird dip down to 55 cents, came back to the 200 and then ripped. Hitting this strong resistance, bouncing down and coming back up and fighting with it. And that's what's going on right now. Between the 200 day SMA and this strong resistance, she is battling right now. And our SMA say she's trying to get through this resistance. And if she gets through it, she's probably gonna run. Our oscillators on the five minute are kind of weak. But GNS, she, her revenues are growing. They're making lots of deals. They are covering the world and they're in a sector that is just constantly growing. Honestly, folks, I can't see GNS failing. I think they're going to be a very, very huge company. I'd put GNS on my watch list for a long time, but I would watch it right now. I think she is set up for a breakout. Now, remember folks, all the stocks we covered, there are gaps in the due diligence. You know I didn't do all the research. I'm counting on you to fill those gaps before you go invest in your money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.